I'm Ron Patterson, University of Idaho Extension horticulture educator in Bonneville County. Weeds do not recognize property boundaries and they really are everybody's problem. Today's weed warrior topic is musk thistle. Musk thistle is a biennial, which means that it typically takes two growing seasons for it to complete its life cycle. The first year it germinates and forms this rosette or low growing arrangement of leaves. The leaves are, have uh, deep lobes and then around the margins it's actually a little bit lighter color along the margins and the midrib itself is a light color. This rosette can grow up to three to five feet across before winter sets in and it sets there through the winter and it goes through a process called vernalization which is kind of a chilling signal for the plant to, to develop a flower the next year. Then the second growing season the plant bolts which is this elongation of the stem it produces the flowers and the seeds. Once the flower starts blooming it takes about seven to ten days to get viable seed and then it continues to bloom through the summer for up to two months you could have blossoms coming off from the plant and producing seed. Musk thistle typically blooms from anywhere from two to six feet or even taller like this plant here that's trying to reach up into the sun. It's over 12 feet tall. The lower stems have a medium sized fin of thorns that grow up the stem. When you get up close to the flower head the stem is practically bare. The flowers are rather large and quite attractive with spiny bracts on the back. The shape resembles a, a powder puff brush. Most of the other biennials kind of a more like a shaving brush type look to them, but this kind of has that powder puff brush look to it. After the plant has produced seeds, it will die. Now these seeds can remain viable in the soil for up to 10 years, so a long-term program is what is needed. Musk thistle tends to form large communities. 99% of windborne seeds land on the ground and germinate within about 300 feet of the parent plant, choking out the native or desirable vegetation. Now those thick stands of musk thistle limit access to land and recreational sites. And while some individual animals like horses or goats may eat some of the seed heads, there is very little grazing value to musk thistle and the pasture utilization is greatly reduced, not only for livestock, but for wildlife as well. Because musk thistle only reproduces by seed, the main objective of any control program should be to stop it from going to seed. A simple tool that you can use, you can make one of these uh, thistle seed head pullers. You just pop it in there. You get all these that have the seeds, the viable seeds, the flowers that could produce any seed. And then at this point, then you can dig it down, you can drop that. None of these are going to be producing any seed, but you get those viable seeds off there and then you throw that away or burn it. Do something, to destroy those seeds. Musk thistle is spread by wind, water, hay, and on livestock, equipment, vehicles, and even clothing. Prevention is always the best option in controlling weeds. While wind will carry the musk thistle seed a short distance, plants that are along rivers, streams, and ditch banks will have their seeds carried very long distances. So keep waterways clean and free of seed producing weeds. If you like to go hiking or fishing, you can carry a plastic bag or pocket knife with you very easily and then a small garden trowel or something to, uh, you just pop those seed heads off there, put that in your plastic bag. You can carry that home with you. Then get your trowel out or something with which you can dig and pop that out of the ground and then you you solve that issue. You don't have to worry about these small ones, just the big ones. Feed wee free hay to your livestock, especially when you're riding horses on the trail. Clean construction, farming, and recreational vehicles and equipment before you leave contaminated areas, or at least before you go into a new area that's not infested. Employ production practices that encourage competition from desirable plants. A well-managed perennial grass pasture is much less likely to let musk thistle get established. Any kind of tillage is very effective on musk thistle, especially in the rosette stage, so you don't have to worry about seed production after plant removal. A shovel or hoe on individual plants or small patches works wonders. Be sure to remove at least two inches of the root below the crown, then get some healthy competition in the area. Mowing areas to keep weeds down works very well on musk thistle. Research indicates that mowing at the late bud stage and again four weeks later will provide up to 79% control. Continual mowing after that is even better. There are several herbicide products that are listed for and do a good job on musk thistle. I will place links to several publications that discuss herbicide options in the description area below. Always read and follow the label directions for your own safety and for the environment. 
Now the best time of year for controlling biennial plants such as musk thistle is in the fall. Spring weather and busy planting conditions make spring herbicide application somewhat impractical. Also, bolting plants are less susceptible to herbicides. Now while some herbicides have a certain amount of soil activity, you will get better control if the plants are healthy and actively growing. For biological control, there is a seed head weevil that was first released in the 60s that helps to reduce the production of seeds and can be found throughout Idaho. This weevil is not specific to musk thistle and most states will not allow its distribution anymore. There is a rosette feeding weevil that kills the bud of the rosette. There is a leaf feeding tortoise beetle that skeletonizes the leaves and there is also a leaf and shoot miner that feeds on the inner cells of leaves and shoots. As mentioned before, some livestock will eat seed heads before the seed has formed, but they won't usually reach those lower flowers, and so that's not a practical solution. Soil solarization may be a practical solution on a small scale, but it needs to be done during the hot part of the summer. Long-term control of musk thistle will be much more likely to happen if you employ more than one control technique, cultural, chemical, mechanical, biological. Get several of those working together and you'll have better control. Musk thistle continues to be a serious environmental threat throughout the West and especially here in Idaho. Doing nothing will not solve the problem, so be a good neighbor. Be a weed warrior.